After nearly 15 years of low interest rates, savers are now enjoying some decent income produced by the money that they hold in bank and building society deposits, even while borrowers are feeling the pinch. But those savers might not realize that higher rates, plus some changes made a few years ago, mean there's a potential sting in the tail. Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name is Pete Matthew and I'm a chartered financial planner based here in the UK. And this video is brought to you by Meaningful Academy Retirement Planning. More on that in just a little bit. Now, back in April 2016, interest on savings began to be paid gross. That is, without any income tax being taken off. Before that, the banks took basic rate income tax off before they paid you the interest, unless you declared that you were a non-taxpayer. Now, at the same time, the Chancellor introduced the Personal Savings Allowance, which allows for the first £1,000 of interest received in a year to be tax-free if you're a basic rate taxpayer and the first 500 quid of interest if you're a higher rate taxpayer. Now, for years, this £1,000 personal savings allowance was enough because you had to have a ton of money put aside to earn that much interest. Just a couple of years ago, you were getting maybe half a percent interest on your savings, and that meant that you'd need over £200,000 to earn any taxable interest. Now, though, it's easy to get a 5% interest rate on your savings, and that means that if you've got more than £20,000, your interest could be taxable. And that might mean that you have to talk to HMRC and maybe even do a tax return. If you have enough cash in savings, that means you might need to pay tax on the interest, you could just put it in an ISA or premium bonds, maybe even a pension. That'll make the money more tax efficient. But what if you've just received a substantial inheritance or been made redundant with a big payoff? Or maybe you've just taken tax-free cash from your pension. Suddenly there's six figures in your bank account. You can put 20 grand into an ISA, 50 into premium bonds. If there are two of you, potentially that's 140,000 you can put away in fairly short order. But if you've got more than that, you could be faced with letting the revenue know that you should be paying tax on the interest. Now, it's not definite that you need to do a full tax return. It might be that you just have to tell HMRC about the change in your situation. But there's a great page on the gov.uk website that asks a bunch of questions to determine if you need to actually do a full tax return. I'll put a link in the description. But make no mistake, it's your responsibility to let HMRC know if you should be paying tax. Fortunately, it's dead easy to complete a tax return these days. You'll need to register for a government gateway account online, and then you'll need to log into that account and register for self-assessment. That's the proper name for the process of doing a tax return. I'll put both of those links in the description, of course. You'll get a unique taxpayer reference, a UTR, and you'll need that to submit your tax return. Then, the gov.uk website will walk you through submitting the different kinds of income that you've incurred. Now, obviously, it helps if you had all the information together beforehand, so make sure you gather together details of any bank interest paid in the year, P60 or P45 from any employment, details of any other income, including state pension, tax vouchers or certificates from any investments, details of any pension contributions you've made. There's probably more, but that's the bulk of what you'll need. Keeping good records throughout the year will help you with this. Now, there is an alternative to doing the tax return directly on the gov.uk website, but before I go over that, let me take just a short time to tell you about Meaningful Academy Retirement Planning, and in particular, the brilliant planning app called Voyant Go, which is included for a year with your membership. This is the tool that I use every day with clients. It enables you to build up a picture of your current financial situation and then build scenarios based on possible plans like retiring three years early or making a gift to your children or the cost of long-term care. It'll also calculate things like the maximum you could spend without running out of money or the difference in outcome if you get a given level of return on your money. It's a really powerful tool, but it's easy to use and there are tons of video lessons where I teach you the tricks of using it. And there's a community of hundreds of other members who are using the app for their own planning. So head over to MeaningfulAcademy.com slash retirement planning. And if you decide that the Academy is for you, use the coupon code YouTube for a decent discount. I'll see you on the inside. There are alternatives to submitting your tax return directly on the gov.uk website. For years, I've used an app called TaxCalc, which I'll link to in the description. It's 30 something quid a year, but it walks you through things really easily. And I find it easier to navigate through the tax return and skip around than it is on the main website. TaxCalc allows you to submit the return using the same government gateway login details, or even prints off a paper return for you in a format that is acceptable to the revenue 
if you prefer to submit that way. So this is just a quick little video because I reckon more people might be caught out by this than you'd think. If you think you're gonna earn more than a thousand pounds of taxable interest this year, definitely go through the little checklist on the gov.uk site, see if you need to contact HMRC or do a full tax return. You can always get help from an accountant, but it really, it isn't difficult to do your own self-assessment these days. Let me know what you think in the comments. If it's useful, then you know what to do. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and share the video with someone who needs to know this stuff. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.